Hello and welcome everybody to the Tournament Center. I am joined here by Sam Party, currently sitting at 13 and 2. Not bad. Lock for the top eight, congratulations. Thank you. This is going to be top eight number two? Yep, my second one. And going into this tournament, what did you need for Platinum? Uh, I was in the exact same position as last year. I had 10 points short of Platinum, which is 11 and 5, mm -hmm. and I made top eight then, made top eight now. Oh man. I can so, make a habit of so it. You, so you can say you're kind of a clutch performer, right? I guess so. If such a yeah. thing exists. Okay. Sure. So what did you bring with you uh, to the tournament? Uh, I'm playing Black Green Delirium, okay. Constrictor Delirium, sort of. Okay. So. And of course we have the Constrictor portion of the card, uh, very powerful effect. Uh, why did you opt to go with this strategy for this tournament? So Constrictor is really good. Uh, it's a 2-3. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good against Shock. Pretty good at blocking two ones. Mono Red happens to play a lot of those. <laughs> Mono Red was the deck on everyone's mind going into this tournament. Right. And Constrictor uh, is both powerful against it and is just a powerful proactive card. So against other decks, like against the Blue-White Monument deck that people were a little worried about, or blue uh, the Blue-White Gift of the God Pharaoh deck, you still have a card. They don't have a ton of removal. You have a card that has a very powerful effect on the game that you can just play and is great. Okay, and there are multiple ways to kind of build the Windy Constrictor deck. Moving here, we have, of course, the Delirium package. Some people opted to go for the Energy version. Why did you choose to go for the Grim Flayer Traverse the Uldenwald build? So I think the Delirium package is incredibly important to this deck. Mm -hmm. um, for example, I played in the last round against Green Black Energy. In the late game, I drew two Traverse the Uldenwalds. He drew two a tune with Aethers, mm. his were a Swamp and a Forest, mine were a Kalidus <laughs> and a Gear Hulk. So you're saying a tutor is better than a land in the late game. Exactly. And Grimflare, what's not to love? It's a two mana 4-4 four, four <laughs> that also fixes your draws and has Trample. Yeah, and you know, but, but the combination of these two cards did a lot of work for you at the last Pro Tour that you top aided. Yep. All and right. the last Grand Prix I talked about <laughs> oh, as just, well. So Green Black just been good for you. Grim Flare for well, life. Well, you needed something to take over kind of all the Birthing Pod decks exactly. that you were playing in the past. Exactly. All right, moving on here, we have the three mana creatures in the deck. We have three copies of Tireless Tracker and only one copy of Rishkar. Why just one copy of Rishkar? So Rishkar is, as I would, I like to describe it as a pile of numbers. You get <laughs> a three mana 2-2 two -two and then some counters to put wherever you want them. Great in game one when maybe you want a more proactive game plan. Post board, the game slowed down a little bit. So it's really a concession to we need some sideboard space. We don't want this card in our deck post board a lot of the time because we're going to be playing sort of a controlling plan. Mm -hmm. And so only one there. It's good against mono red. If you ever get to put a counter on two guys, it makes it really hard for them to kill. You get right. two, three or four toughness creatures. Tracker grinds them out. It's just great. You just keep drawing cards keep sacking those clues. It's a little unfair as a control player that green somehow just gets the best card draw engine in the format. Exactly, yeah, tracker. it's just so good. <laughs> All right, moving on here. We have more three drops. These are the three mana Planeswalkers, two copies of Liliana the Last Hope, followed by three copies of Nyssa, Voice of Zendikar. Why this package? So Liliana, again, great against Monora. They happen to have a lot of creatures with one toughness. And also, they'd only have so many ways in their deck to kill Kalidus. Mm -hmm. So minus two, get it back get something going. It's a way to both win the game and a, a card that slows them down a lot. Nyssa is a really powerful planeswalker. Uh, the the Rishkar kind of took the place of the fourth Nyssa for us. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it just the minus, minus two ability, insane with Winding Constrictor. Sometimes you traverse for Constrictor, play one, get one or two in a turn, and just goes huge. Yeah, yeah. Anytime you get kind of in a board, st board stall with a windy constrictor in play, you draw this a voice of the a card and that just totally exactly, breaks open the game. Yeah. Also different card type to help you with delirium, right? Yep. Yeah, you yeah. need to have a nice mix, so that's yeah. that's key. All right, moving on, we have some of the heavy hitters here. Two copies of Kalidus, Trader of Get, two Verdurs Gear Hulks, and four Walking Ballistas. Kind of briefly go over why you opted to go for these numbers. So Kalidus, totally a mono red card. Um, it has other applications. It's a really powerful card. It's really good against the uh, Gift of the God Pharaoh deck. Also, you can steal a lot of game ones against uh, them. Yeah. Game one's pretty tough usually, but you have, uh, if, you, if you get Kalidus in play, their Gate to the Afterlight stops working. It becomes a lot harder for them to get things into their graveyard. Uh, Walking Ballista, Mono Red plays <laughs> a lot of X1s. Right. Good with Winding Constrictor. Yeah. You'll notice a theme here. And Verter's Gear Hulk is just one of the best things you can play in the five drop slot. It's huge, works with Constrictor, works with Walking Ballista, put some counters on Kalidus, gain a bunch of life. You want a fatty to traverse for. So you're telling me you want it to be Mono Red coming into this tournament. I, I was pretty <laughs> interested in defeating Mono Red, All right, yes. so these are all the spells in the deck. Moving on, oh, we know, we have, of course, the interactive portion here. We have Fatal Push, Grasp of Darkness, Dissenter's Deliverance, Dissenter's Deliverance to deal with 
some of the artifacts that you might see? Yeah, there's, there's again, Gift of the God Pharaoh, Oketra's Monument, random vehicles can okay. be problematic. I've killed a Bomat Courier, yeah. that's not great. And of course, Fatal Push and Grass for the cheap interactive removal. Yep. All right, now we're gonna round it out, of course, with the lands. We have our utility lands in Blooming Marsh, Evolving Wilds to help get Delirium, the creature lands in the Hissing Quagmire, and then, of course, we have our basics and uh, one copy of Haship Oasis, a, a way to put a land in your graveyard, pump up your Grim Flare. You can like traverse that. for it if you need an extra three damage. <laughs> trample, you have, a, you have a couple Trample guys, a couple Lifelink guys, so you can get it, that extra, extra burst of damage when you need it. Pretty All right, good. well, again, congratulations for locking up the top eight with the exact same deck, maybe plus two cards. Uh, this is Paul Chion at the Tournament Center with Sam Party. We'll be right back. Thanks.